Welcome to Real Estate Wisdom Podcast with Vishal Kapoor Realtor. And today we're going to discuss a very happening topic, uh, which is untying the knot and uh, going on different ways and, and how you sell the real estate in, in that situation. I know uh, this is uh, uh, happening a lot, like I know in the last couple of weeks, um, I will say in a couple of weeks, I will say like since the COVID, a lot of this thing is happening. People not agreeing to each other, uh, married couples, like even they are in uh, a short-term relationship, a long-term relationship, or, or they are like, you know, even people separating after 25 years, 28 years. But why is this happening? And is that okay? And what are the complications are when you selling your home um, during separation? The first, what we have to look into that, why these separations are happening? Well, there are multiple reasons. Um, most common reason based on like the Stats Canada, uh, it's looking to like a devastatement, like you know, what are the cause for um, these things happening? Uh, one thing is can be, uh, you know, uh, infidelity. Uh, the other one is can be like a financial stress. Third could be like um, they don't get along anymore. Because when they got married, like, you know, uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, they were different people. But things have changed, situation have changed. And that's what causing them to go, decide to go separate ways because they are not the same people. But what I think what's happening um, during COVID, that we get the chance to be at home more often uh, than usual. And uh, what was happening is, like, you know, we just... Um, you know, just looking into all those stuffs uh, which were ignoring before, and now it's right in front of us. And now we say, you know what? Who's making more? Uh, who's contributing more towards the family? And uh, is that providing that person providing some value? It could be husband. It could be a wife. But more so, I am seeing it uh, recently is like you know when women started making a little bit more, and uh, the husband. Um, it's not making enough, and that can create the problem because as we got raised, um, women being always been trained like, as a uh, homemaker, and uh, boys or uh, guys like being trained as like you know the, the sole earner, uh, and they provide the financial support to their family. Um, but things are changing; uh, people are uh, moving. Like you know, ladies are doing uh, way better. Uh, now and with the fem feminism and equal rights and everything, that's giving them the more strength uh, to them as well. And fairly so, like, you know, if both partners are not contributing, uh, not bringing together, that can create a problem. But is that what the love about? Uh, is that like, a, you know, it's, it's more transactional? Well, something to think about and love to see your comments like you know if you have gone through if you want to put like a comments in there and your idea uh, about being married and what compromises like someone have to do as a compromise or is the uh, being adjusting uh, to that nature so uh, recently uh, just like mentioned like you know a lot of people have going through that and as a realtor uh, what we're going to talk about today is like when you're going through the separation, what steps you can take to make the process smooth. I know it's not easy uh, because your egos, your belief, like a bring, uh, come into this uh, thing and how are we going to do things. And we're not, if you're not agreeing to small things like, you know, what grocery to buy and who's going to take the kids to car, uh, imagine like a selling home, that can be even more difficult. Uh, in that case, what you will need is you need the right advisor. Uh, first of all, you both have to agree that you need the advice. Uh, and that can go like separate ways as well. And, you know, husband want to hire another realtor uh, who he believe in and uh, wife say, I don't trust you and I don't take that realtor. I don't work with him. So what do you have to do? Well, first of all, you have to have a good communication. You have to keep the emotional stuff aside and think practicality. As less like a damage you can do to each other financially, that'll be great because you've already gone through like a lot of emotional stress, uh, which causing other people like a physical or mental health issues as well. 
but you know what when uh we are not on the same page then it's get even difficult because trust is broken and now we're not looking each other at the same way what we used to look each other but like i said you have to look into future uh sometime it happens like you know other person saying uh, you know what i will make your life miserable and i'll do any means i can do because this is not what i planned for i expected more from you um but now i'm going to do so it's like the never ending fight but also you have to look into that what is giving you is that giving you a comfort that uh sabotaging other person's uh life um uh, situation or it's say like, you know what let's let's finish this and let go in different directions uh, you be happy and i'll be happy in what i want to do uh, but it's not as easy it's easy as it's uh, it said and uh, that's why you need the professional advice so my uh, recommendation uh, is like you know get the mediator so mediation it's very important in that way you have one person who's dealing with these professionals to help you uh it can be a lawyer uh it can be a your friend who you both trust uh who can help you and uh, now it come to time to uh planning to sell your matrimonial home it can be you know even if assets like you know even make it more uh, difficult but let's stick to the point like i you know you're selling your matrimonial home because now you both want to live separately and uh, you both have mortgages on them and uh, you want to go separate ways and divide it so what do you have to do well do your research hire a realtor who can work for both of you and that could be one thing or you can hire two realtors for each of you who have to cooperate and and do maybe co-listing of your uh of your home so these are the some common things like how to find those ones well you have to interview them and ask them if they have dealt that kind of situation before because if they haven't dealt that kind of situation before it will be very hard because they won't understand what to say what not to say how to communicate um with both of you uh and even in some cases like and the more parties are involved right so how are we going to do that so best thing to do is like interviews like a several one or even get the references maybe you have friend like who got separated before and they have uh they have experience like a, the services from the realtor who was helping them in getting things done well maintaining a, a positive mindset during the selling process uh can be challenging but uh here's some tips like you know which i wrote down to help uh, and this these tips are what i got through my experiences dealing with those uh, couples um and learn from the mistakes i did mistakes as well like what not to say what not to do but one thing for sure it's having that communication line open um between both the partners is very crucial so i will say like you know focus on the end goal what do you want to achieve your marriage is already ended like and that's done and said but now focus on the end goal uh, remind yourself of the benefits and opportunities that selling your home will bring such as fresh start or a financial stability you know it's tough like because market is down right now as well what you were expecting before you might not be getting uh, at this moment but how to maximize that right and like i said if you can wait which no guarantee that in 5 months or 6 months anything is going to change um that could be seen but it's all depending upon individual to individual and how they manage the stress especially living in the same house uh, it can be very difficult uh, if you don't have the understanding the other thing which i'll say like in the practice self care because take time for activities that uh, bring you joy and help reduce stress such as exercise meditation or spending time with loved ones and a lot of time people ignore that because we are going in that thought process and cycle again and again that it become very difficult for uh taking self care right like i said celebrate um small victories acknowledge and celebrate each milestone achieved during the selling process uh such as receiving and after completing necessary paperwork like it mentioned like you know, um emotions take over and that's the thing align emotions to dictate 
uh, decision can lead to impulsive choices or unnecessary conflicts. Uh, it is important to approach the process with the level-headed mindset. How to do it? Well, uh, the thing is, like, you have to communicate. Uh, you know, uh, hire a lawyer. Uh, but thing with like a lawyer is, like, uh, they might not be telling the thing. They protecting you, but sometimes it happens that things you're missing. Uh, they way they go overboard, and that's like an experience where I'm telling you from uh, dealing with like a different clients and everything. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's not an issue, but because you heard from that professional. And that's suddenly being an issue. I will say, like, you know, if you can mutually agree to each other, uh, that would be the best scenario, uh, especially, like, uh, if you're keeping your emotion aside. The second thing, I will say, like, uh, the biggest thing which I have seen in uh, doing tra- transactions is a lack of communication. Um, failing to communicate openly, honestly, with each other can lead to mu- misunderstandings, delays, and increased tension, regular and clear communication is definitely a key. And it's the communication is not only between you guys, but also the person you hired. Uh, it can be uh, challenging if you're not communicating. I remember like in this case when I met the husband first and then I met the uh, lady uh, second. Um, they both agreed to hire me because of the experience what I had and they listened to my presentation and everything and they have the mediator. Um, so initially everything was going all right. Uh, lady took the charge and uh, we set up like a staging, marketing plan, when we can show the property and everything. Uh, but in this case, husband got missing in action. Uh, he was nowhere to be found. And whenever sending the communication, like oh, this is happening because as a realtor, it was my duty to, uh, because they both are my clients, to be fair with each other and already explain to them that I'm going to be transparent, I'm going to share all the information uh, which they require. And uh, in this case, the husband, you know, disappeared and not disappeared, but it was not communicating on time. And as you can understand, this is, uh, real estate is very time sensitive things because uh, if things not happening on time, it can delay the process and sometime you incur the losses. So in this situation, you know, the spouse, and the lady spouse, like, you know, she was, uh, more communicative and explaining everything, our situation, and try to adjust as much I can. But certain things you can't because uh, the showings need to happen. It's need to be flexible, and if it's not flexible, then it's going to again restrict it. Uh, but good thing happened with the, her effort and everything. We able to get the offer within a week, uh, which is in this market. Getting the offer within a week, it's a high thing to do. And now what happened is uh, we got the two offers in hand. And they were asking price, what we were doing. Um, and there were some conditions in there. But as a negotiator, I know how to negotiate and how to bring this down. When I send the offer for both the party to look into and sign, what happened is like in one party was not responding. And then said, hey, I'm not going to sign any offer uh, until our separation agreement has got signed. And I said, what? You know, we had the communication before and we hired, you hired me, uh, but now you're changing your stance. I don't know what's going, how this is going to happen. I think like they got overwhelmed because they were not expecting uh, it's the process going to happen that quickly. Uh, so in that case, um, they got overwhelmed. So it's like, I cannot keep on taking an offer or do the showing until you guys agree to that we are open to accept offers. In that case, like, you know, say, yeah, uh, we can't take offers. We set the date when we're going to do it, and that's perfect. Um, but it's not happening right now until the other documents got. So back and forth, I uh, decided to suspend that listing uh, for another 10 days. And after 10 days, like, a both, they calm down because it was instant reaction. That's why I said, like, you know, never say never uh, and don't take decision uh, out of emotions. Listen to it, analyze it, calm down, and then respond. And that can happen, like, in any situation. If you do that way, you're going to make a better decisions. Uh, and that's what my uh, personal experience as well. That uh, take some, give some time for yourself.
Um, so that's what happened. Like, and after that, like we came out in the market. Market was changed already, uh, but we were have a decision to make. We do the higher price or lower price. How to attract more buyers? We decide the strategy of like you know we're going to the below market value to see the interest and how much <laughs> we're going to get. And then what happened is we still got the offers. A lot of showings happened because it was an underlisted property. And uh, that person now we got the offers at least four or five offers, but most of them they were way below than what we were doing before. Uh, we able to get at the end uh, very close to asking price, uh, what the original asking price was, but they lost almost like fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Uh, so those damages, if you have made the proper decision before, uh, they might have got a little bit more um, because you know nobody had the crystal ball. What's going to happen in in a week, in two weeks, in a month? And, uh, and that's why it happens. So sometime, like when we say as a realtor, first offer is always normally is the best offer. And that was the case. Well, that's the example of like, you know, if you're not having a clear communication with each other, that can give you like a more financial stress uh, and more financial losses. The, in other scenario, what's happened, like that's, they want to do it like a mutually and they haven't done any professional advice and they both were going in two different directions. And it's hard to communicate with those people because they don't know that's what consideration they have to do. Uh, I able to sit down with them and also refer the uh, lawyer who can help them uh, because they say, like, well, lawyer is going to take a lot of money. Uh, but there's a s separate things, like different things you can do in order to get the legal advice. A lot of advice also available online, which is given like guideline. It won't give you uh, exact like what you have to do, um, but it's give you like a steps like what you should consider. Uh, and sometimes like, you know, there's a, a site called like lawdepot.ca uh, where you can go and you can create those separation agreement template and then you can modify it and fill it but like that's a preparation, you're doing it if you mutually agree and then take the document to the uh, lawyer and you can refine it based on your scenario uh, and that can probably help as well. So having professional advice, even if it's like a realtor or your uh, lawyer, that, that will help. Other thing uh, which happens a lot, like you know, people are uh, listening to their friends and relatives because uh, you know, friends and relatives are there. If they have gone through the process, they might be able to guide you and you have a great relationship with them because a lot of people don't even want to share those personal information either. So that's make it difficult. But if you get lucky and you have that person, uh, seek that advice. Ask them like uh, what mistakes they have done and what uh, they shouldn't be done. But listen to everyone, but make a decision to yourself because your life uh, impact with that. The one more thing happened, like, you know, when you, uh, dis like, let's say you hire the realtor and uh, he's advising you because you have to stage the home. And in this current market, it should be presenting your home well, uh, but it is challenging. Now you have that all emotional things going on. When you're going to uh, give that time and who's going to give that time to stage and maintain uh, and uh, keep it clean. Uh, and if you have kids, then even it's more difficult to manage that. But here's a professional realtor who can come and help you with that kind of stuff and assist you in making it process as less, like as, as smooth as possible, should I say, or say like a mm, less hassle. Um, but it's, it's not easy, but it's a teamwork, like which I can lead you guys um, to the end goal. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, staging is such an important part. I uh, should stage it uh, and should prepare it in order to get the, uh, uh, the, the price which you're looking for for your home. The other consideration uh, have to do is like a deciding the price, right? So overpricing any house won't help. And in a lot of discussion, it happens like the one of the spouse, he wanted more or she wanted more. And the other spouse, like a female, maybe, you know, they're okay with like a, because they just want to sell the house, they want to go separate way, they cannot take it anymore. 
and they will say like whatever price I'll get, I'll take it, right? So those are things like you know, have to consider like in the financial obligations and uh, again, experienced realtor, know how to manage those emotions and uh, giving the picture uh, clarity. So if I was getting that, like, you know, if I'm hiring a realtor, I will ask him those questions uh, and getting the things of why they want that price. So having the market value, because in no market, um, it's not like a, what seller wants to sell it for, what buyers want to buy it for is what the market is telling you, what the market is. So if they're providing those numbers and giving the comparables and the reason like why uh, we should price it in a certain way to achieve a certain price goal, um, you follow that rather than sticking to your emotions because uh, you just put the upgrades on them and you do a lot of return on investment, uh, but that's not the case. It's all depending upon what's the market is and what's going on. Also, you have to consider uh, about the other expenses. You know, if you have the mortgage, for example, uh, it's on fixed or variable, uh, considering those kind of losses which you have to pay. If it's variable, you're just paying three months interest, but if it's fixed, it could be 10, 15, 18, 20,000, depending upon the mortgage size, how much penalty you'll be paying as well. So take that into consideration too. Uh, in order to maximize your return. Other things which uh, a realtor will tell you is not to say too much to too many people, right? As a realtor, we have the fiduciary duty to uh, protect our client. And in some cases, like happen, and I'm not telling like why they're selling uh, the property uh, because it will give some like a ne negative impact uh, and it's give them more arsenal to the person. Now they know who is needy and what they need. Um, and, and you are giving away. And this is the advice for the realtors as well I dealt with. And they will tell everything to the other realtor, the why it's selling. Recently I had the guy um, looking for the property for myself and I know that like, you know, that seller already purchased the property. And this guy like explained me everything. But, you know, uh, why they needed. So that gave me a power to negotiate uh, because I was offering what I want to offer and how much I want to purchase it for. So don't, don't give away like too much information because that could be um, detrimental uh, in the sense like in how much you can get. Other important aspect like which I mentioned before, like why you need the legal advice on that because separation is not straightforward because different situations, different legal considerations, for example, like a child support, spousal support, uh, what you have to do, uh, who contributed, how much, but then matrimonial home, like it usually it's like, you know, 50-50, uh, uh, but it's not as clear as what you want. Like, you know, uh, maybe husband was contributing more towards the mortgage or maybe uh, wife was doing more contribution or maybe not, like maybe they have their parents involved in there who's doing the contribution as well. So it gets a little bit complicated. So prepare that, you know, the document which I'll say, like what you, as much you can think about, but also take that legal consideration. Um, I know it's expensive, lawyers are expensive, but be particular about like a writing, what questions you're going to ask. Do your own research as well. And then if you're in a doubt, ask those questions. Uh, so having legal consideration is so important when you're selling your matrimonial home that like, for example, like a tax implications, um, definitely not a matrimonial home that you're going to pay that much tax, but let's say you have the investment property. Uh, you have the another one rental property, which you have, and uh, now you have to sell and the appreciation happened. Like, you know, you purchased like, you know, five years ago and five years market has changed and now appreciation go up and you make on that like 200 to uh, 400,000 on that, like you have to pay the capital gain. Uh, yes, you cannot get away by because now you can, other person, if they're buying it out uh, even, and then even they have to pay like, a, you have to pay your uh, capital gain taxes as well. For more information on that, like, you know, we can discuss more. If you have any question, you can reach out to me. I can be able to help you. 
but also consult with your um, your accountant, uh, CPA, uh, tax accountant. Like, uh, what are the implications? And uh, is there a way if you can save that money, right? Um, and even you can defer it because in these kind of situations, sometimes you become cash poor. I, you just paying off your mortgage. Uh, you're taking a small portion of the appreciation uh, for your uh, you know livelihood. So it's it's large. It's a it's very difficult, and that's why I say like you know when people uh, get emotional and stuck to their you know uh, ego uh, and they don't want to adjust. Uh, sometimes like a small things, it's not a big thing uh, that they cannot adjust, but they give away everything for because of that particular thing which the other spouse was not agree or they both would not agree with each other and trying to change each other. Uh, think about the, you know, uh, future. That's how much pain you go through. But sometimes it's necessary. You have to go through that pain too, rather to reach on the other side and move on with your life because ultimate goal of life is to be happy. And uh, you should be happy um, the way you do things, but sometimes be having emotional intelligence is so important thing. Uh, being practical is important, but uh, being emotionally intelligent is more important, uh, in my opinion. So we talk a lot about like you know like uh, the common mistakes people do, and common mistakes usually what people do they don't communicate, lack of communication and getting the wrong advice. Uh, so always hire a professional. But my request to you, look into that relationship. And look into that, like, you know, what you, uh, when you started your life, you were, you were in love or maybe you got arranged marriage and everything and you start with the positive things. Uh, and sometimes it's not only a lot of things, only if the one small thing or it's like one big thing could be, uh, which take you off. But in my opinion, like those like small, small things like a change. So uh, for LD relationship, uh, in my opinion, like, be authentic. Uh, don't try to be somebody else. Uh, and uh, treat each other with respect. Like, uh, that's more important. And things can be done respectfully as well if you guys decided, if anybody decided to uh, go in their separate direction. But I'm not the counselor. I'm a realtor. I'm here to help people uh, in making those transactions easy. Got some experience, unfortunate, like people get separated, but at the same time, uh, here's a professional. Uh, I come as a professional giving the professional advice what they should do and what should not do. Okay, until next time, um, be together. Don't get separated. And if you're getting separated, you know who to reach out to. Until next time, bye for now. Disclaimer. The information provided in this podcast is for informational purpose only and should not be considered as financial or investment advice. Consult with your professional before making any real estate decisions.